Hey yo, hey yo, it's your boy Monster Man Rocco. It's your boy Swagger Rock. This is Snack Ripper. And you have to go to don't know. Master Ace, you are not rocking with the best. Breaking Records Radio. Breaking Records, man. Breaking Records Radio. Breaking Records Radio. Breaking Records. Breaking Records. Breaking Records Radio. Let's go. Breaking Records Radio. Breaking Records Radio. Breaking Records Radio. Breaking Records, man. Radio is like the place to be. I don't know. Fuck strange music, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So the guy with the car was the, was, was the main dude, and he was the one that usually got the, the majority of the chicks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I remember him I remember him jumping out, one of my partners jumping out, talking to the, the bad chick in the group. But well, I didn't want the bad chick in the group. Well, you know, with the bamboo earrings, the one with all the jewelry. You know, she had the crazy boots on and all that. She was dressed real fly. Yeah. Fly Say you word. Know, that's a true story. That's a true story. And I'm just trying to say that, that you know, she didn't do that, you know, uh, 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 a good time by the memories, um, holidays and, and birthdays and things would never been shared. That's because, you know, if, if it was in this time frame, her and I would have never met. Yeah, facts. Word up, man. And um, with that being said, too, on the opposite hand of it, sometimes you got to deal with rejection. And the song that uh, highlights very heavily of that was the I'm Not Having It, you and MC Light, the classic, right? Um, well, MC, MC Light was always the attitudinal one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm curious. She was always the attitudinal. <laughs> <laughs> How did that join up? You know, that song, you, you, got, you, know, you know, and that's a lot of things, too, man. You know, I mean, that captured a whole bunch of stuff. Rejection, um, why people do a lot of stalking, why people do a lot of things that they're going to kind of kind of weird now and out of pocket for, for, for a person from my era and, and for a lot of people um, bullying bullying and stuff like that comes into play you know because a lot of people can't stand rejection yep. you know so 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 it spawns a lot of other energies when people want to do all these other things to avoid rejection yep. bad killings shootings um, um, heinous crimes it all pops up because people don't want to face the inevitable shame the rejection facts and you know what rejection builds character like you need you need <laughs> bullies you need to get rejected by some girls Yeah, and do you know what? Um, you know, um, I've never had the chance to see you live, but everything that I hear is you're regarded for having a crazy uh, live show. And I seen an interview once where you and uh, Greg Nice were talking about it. And, you know, Greg Nice is known for a good live show, too. And exactly what you said, though, you're like, I just keep hitting them and hitting them and hitting them so they don't have a chance to absorb it till I'm done. Then I leave the stage. There it is. I'm not asking no questions. I'm going to give you me. And that's it. You got no choice but to take it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever hit you so fast and so quick when it for me, you ain't got no choice to say, damn, you know, hey, you know, uh, by the time you make up your mind, you're going to say, yeah, he was dope. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's dope, man. Uh, but I know, um, 
So I was curious too, like with the, the MC Light thing, like how did that whole joint ever come about? Like, did you guys have a relationship prior to that, or was that just something that you guys worked out for that joint and it became something? Or well, when I first got to the label, first priority, I was brought there by um, it was a song that I had made called Autograph Pan, which is my first record. Okay. That I made for first priority, and um, it was produced by Daddy or from Sex Sign, and he was like, "Yo, you know, 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 you that was well. Well, my first record was done with back with Mikey Bass for the Crash Crew, but my first record on first priority was done by Daddy O. Okay. And, um, it was called Quarter Grand Pam. Uh, they wanted to drop three records at the time, which was Quarter Grand Pam um, for myself and Cram to Understand You and Top Miller by Audio Two. Yeah. And we didn't know what was going on, what was happening. It was just this was the, the, the idea that Nat Robinson wanted to do, and this is what he wanted to try and pull off. Um, my first manager who um, I was referred to by Heidi Smith from Def Jam Records, was Lamumba Carson. And if you don't know who Lamumba Carson is, that's the son of um, Sonny Carson. Oh, um, word. Uh, 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 yeah, social activist. And also we know him as um, Professor X, the overseer. That's, oh. <laughs> that's the whole one of the same guy. Yeah, yeah. So oh, shit. I was uh, Professor X's first artist. He was my first real manager. Wow. And, and, he, took, and he took me to first priority. And um and I got there and he, well, he, first he got me with Daddy O because him and Daddy O was boys, you know, and then they all stayed in Brooklyn and um and and he got me with Daddy O and then we did the song and and, and that Roberts was like, no, nah, I want this guy, this oh, guy, shit. I really, I want him, and we went ahead and we did it and we got it on, man, and um and they signed me and when Life was there, we were there, we were doing, you know, she always she gravitated towards me and um. She, you know, cause I, you know, coming up, I was always the spitter, spitter dude. Yeah. You know, rhymes, rhymes. Like I tell everybody, people don't understand really get it sometimes because I got a man with such a big record. A lot of my upstairs records were always big records. Um, I used to rhyme all the time with you know with the with the, with the spitters. I was I was the, I was the gutter dude. I was the dude from the street. Like yo, man, you got big records that that appeal to the masses. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I'm I'm a spit this thing, you know. And that's what I always did. And uh, and she liked that. So so. They were trying to push her and I to do a record. I'm like, what would I do? And I said to myself, what would I do if I was Marvin Gaye? Because Marvin Gaye is like my favorite all-time artist. Okay. And I asked myself a question, what would I do if I was Marvin Gaye? That's dope. All he, did was, all, all he did was duets with, um, with, with, with Terry Terrell and Diane Ross. Yeah. And I was like, wow. I said, you know what? Let me do a duet with, with, with Light and let me see how it works. Ah. And uh, yeah, yeah. So I wrote the song. And we put it out together, and I, you know, we went through it, and, and she was who she was phenomenally on record, like she always is, and we did it, and it was just straight magic. It was magic from there. Oh, man, that's dope. And then you actually brought her back and did a, what, what was it, 2017, when you guys did Still Not Having It? Still Not Having It, baby, Still Not Having It. Well, I didn't put it out in 2000, I, I put it out in 2000, I think, 18? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 2018, um, I, we recorded it, and then we put it out in 